Yeah, exactly. But we'll stop at one of the turbines. You get out if you want to and have a closer look at it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be talking the whole time. You'll get really fed up with hearing the sound of my voice. Uh, don't worry, you can talk over the top of me, but that's what I do. Um, I'm extremely deaf, so no good asking any questions while the vehicle is moving, but feel free to ask when we stop. Okay? Great. <laughs> Been here before, some of you may not, but this is the largest onshore wind farm in the United Kingdom and is big. It's just over 30 square miles of wind farm and it contains 215 wind turbines. And if it was actually windy, they would be able to produce 539 megawatts of electricity, which would be enough to. And it's in front of us at the moment. This is uh, an obsolete blade, it's 40 metres long, weighs about 12 tonnes, made of fibreglass over um, a wooden framework, and it's hollow inside. We don't have any blades this small actually working on the wind farm. They're working at this site back in 1996. We thought it would be a potentially good site for a wind farm because it's high up, about 300 metres above sea level, and the higher up we go, the stronger and more consistent the wind is. And it's also quite near the sea, which is over on our right, and the most consistent and best wind is on the sea, which is why these days there are more wind farms being built offshore. But for us, it means that there's a fairly unobstructed run even so, it took 10 years to plan the wind farm and to get planning permission for it. We had to satisfy three local authority planning committees. That was East Ayrshire, East Rimfordshire and South Lanarkshire. And the owners of the land had to be convinced that it was a good idea. Well, we pay them a lot of rent to put the turbines in, so I think they're all pretty happy. We started building the wind farm in 2006. This first group of turbines that we're driving through, we put up 104 tall, and that's because they're in an area still run by the Forestry Commission. They needed to be above the tops of the trees. Now, when they sort of operate in the wind farm to get back in clean energy, what we lost in terms of peat storage. We had a problem with the access roads 3,000 years ago. Absolutely brilliant place to live because it gives you a fantastic all-round view. And if there are people approaching that you don't like the look of, they've been very, very carefully sighted in 12 specific arrays to make the most of the southwest and westerly prevailing wind. And it's just what little there is is just about westerly today but actually the wind direction isn't that important because the tops of the turbines can turn through a complete circle each turbine is one wind to make the best use of what little wind there is they're able to twist the turbine blades to get the maximum effect they're not doing too good a job today They actually need about six miles an hour wind speed to start and we like a wind speed of about 20 to 30.
this thing from Siemens in Germany. You'd be looking at about £800,000 to buy it. So it's not expensive for what it is. However, you've then got to get it transported here in bits. You've got to build the access roads. You've got to have a team to erect it on top of this massive foundation that you would already have put in. So at the end of the day, it's fully cost that one turbine about two and a half million pounds. Now as it happens, it's a two and a half million watt output turbine. So it kind of enables us to cost out the wind farm quite easily as costing us a million pounds a megawatt to build the wind farm. What we hope is at the end of 25 years, each turbine would have produced us a return of eight to nine million pounds and there are 215 of them. So it's a long-term investment, but much more important than that is the fact that it is green power. The turbine itself weighs about 250 tonnes, and all it wants to do when it's windy is blow over, hence this huge 750 tonne concrete base that goes down four metres into the ground. How it's supposed to work is that the wind is going to turn the rotor and the rotor normally runs on a decent windy day about 15 turns a minute. That's nowhere near enough to produce electricity. So there's a gearbox behind the rotor. The output shaft from that runs about 1,000 to 1,500 spins every minute. That's enough to generate the power that we need and the power comes from the generator down the tower and it goes into that green box. Each turbine has one, that's a transformer. The reason for that is what's coming down the tower is a really massive current. Reservoirs on this site, they supply water to Kilmarnock, but the reservoirs are also a, a great habitat for water birds, obviously fish, um, you get lots of insects there, frogs, toads, newts, things like that. What well, built here within the next couple of years, it'll be over there on the left. We've got planning permission for it. And we're, we're going to use solar power as well as excess power from the limiting factors is just the sheer expense of hydrogen powered vehicles. But when there's more of a take up, they will get cheaper. I only work here in the winter and the summer, I work up in the Orkney Islands. Very, very windy place, they make more than 100% of their is as much power. That's because if you double the length of a turbine blade, the area it sweeps in the circle is four times as big. So if the turbines produce four times the power, we think we only need to put up half the number that we've got now, and we're still most of the turbine is made of steel. The tower is entirely steel, the gearbox, a lot of the generator. Um, fortunately, quite recently, uh, a technique has been invented that will chemically reduce these blades and enable us to get the original materials back out. And that's very good because what, what we do is we print, we 3D print whistles that sound at the same pitch that the bats send out and we glue them on the turbine blades. Had to use a great deal of stone and rock for the access roads, for the foundations of the turbines and all of that rock has come off this site. We didn't have big lorries transporting